Welcome back. In this video, we're going to configure external radius authentication for our Firepower Management Center, FMC Shell, and our FTD device. To kick off our config, let's swing over to our Firepower Management Center. Let's start out by navigating to System and then Users. Next, we'll go to External Authentication. Under this menu, we'll go ahead and click Add External Authentication Object. For an external authentication object, you have the option of LDAP or RADIUS. In our case, we're going to go ahead and choose RADIUS. It's going to actually be our ICE server, so I'm going to just go ahead and name this ICE-RADIUS. I'm just filling out the ICE IP address and a RADIUS shared key I've already configured in ICE. When we scroll down, we can see the built-in firepower roles for roles-based access. I also have the option of choosing default user role, which I'll choose as administrator for now and save this configuration. Next, I'm going to go ahead and swing over to ICE and navigate to administration and network devices. We're just going to go ahead and verify that the FMC has been configured here. As you can see, I've already pre-configured a network device for the FMC. The IP address I'm using is the same as the management IP address. I've also put it in the device group of firewalls and given it a shared RADIUS secret. We're going to use RADIUS attributes to let the FMC know which role the authenticated user should be in after authentication. To do so, we're going to need to configure some authorization profiles by navigating to Policy, Policy Elements, and then Results. We're going to expand Authorization on the left-hand side and then go to Authorization Profile. Then we'll click Add to add our first authorization profile. I'm going to name this one FMC Admin. Then I'll scroll to the bottom under Advanced Attribute Settings and go to Radius and then Class. You can go ahead and fill in anything that works for you under this class. It could be domain admins, but for the sake of this configuration, I'll just go ahead and use administrators. That's all we need to do for this authorization profile, so I'll just save it and then add our next one. This authorization profile is going to be used for read-only access, so I'm going to call it fmc-demo. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to Advanced Attribute Settings and go to Radius and then Class. And under this class, I'm going to call it Demo Users. After those authorization profiles are saved, we're going to go ahead and start building our policy on the I side. So let's navigate to Policy and then Policy Sets. I'm going to click the plus button on the top left hand corner and build a new policy set. I'll name this FMC Management. And for the condition, I'm going to choose device, and then device type equals firewalls. I'll keep the allowed protocols at default network access and go ahead and save this new policy set. We can start configuring this policy set by expanding it. And under authentication policy, the default is already all user ID stores. If I wanted to get more granular, I could just pick AD, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it at the default of all user ID stores. Then I'll scroll down to the authorization policy and create a new rule. The rule name is going to be domain admins, and the condition is anybody in the domain admin group from AD1. For the result, we're going to select our FMC admin profile. So if someone authenticates the firewall with an AD account in the domain admins group, ICE will return with a radius class of administrators. Let's duplicate the previous authorization rule, but this time we'll name it Demo Users, and the AD group we'll reference is Demo. For the authorization result, we'll use our FMC Demo profile that we previously created, and let's go ahead and save this policy set. 
After the policy set has been saved, we're going to go ahead and go back to our Firepower Management Center and edit our external authentication object. The FMC needs to know what to do when it receives a class type of administrators or a class type of demo users. So when we edit this configuration, we're going to go ahead and specify that. Just to back out of this for a moment, if we swing over to user roles, you can see the actual roles that are built in. And if you wanted to create another one, you could actually do so from here. Back in our external authentication configuration, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to radius specific parameters. This is basically where we tell the FMC that if it receives a class type of administrator, go ahead and grant it administrator role access. So I'm going to go ahead and put class equals administrator here. And scrolling down to security analysts, that's where I'll put class equals demo users. If you wish to use the external authentication object for shell access to the FMC, you would need to specify the usernames in this list below. One thing that's important to know is that you need to actually do it in all lowercase since this is a Linux shell. So I'm going to go ahead and put my username here. Next, we're going to go ahead and test the demo user account by entering the username and password of it and then testing it. Once that test is complete, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down again and expand the show details of the test output. As you can see here, the radius class of demo users was returned. Based on our configuration, that would assign demo user the security analyst or read-only role. Next, we'll go ahead and test with cat Mac, my account. Once again, we'll scroll down to expand the results. And as you can see here, class administrators was returned. Scrolling up, we're using class administrators to define that that should be an admin account or get granted admin access. Let's go ahead and save that configuration and click on the slider to enable this external authentication object. The one last thing we need to do is click on save and apply to go ahead and apply this. As you can see here, it's going to go ahead and apply those changes. And we'll swing over to the Radius Live Log on ICE just so we can monitor this. I'm going to go ahead and pull up another browser and sign in with the demo users account. Based on how we have the external authentication object configured, this demo user should have read-only access. Looks like it signed in with no problem, and as you can see, we only have access to the overview and analysis tabs. We don't have access to the policy or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and sign out now and sign in with my admin account, which is CatMac. Okay, it looks like it's signed in without an issue, and as you can see on top, we have access to analysis, policies, objects, everything. So I have full access to go ahead and configure it and view everything. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out once again. Let's try SSHing to the FMC and see if that works. Nope access was denied. Looking at the ICE radius logs, we don't see a failed authentication, and that's by design. The reason being is even though we're using the external authentication object for signing into the GUI, we haven't enabled the actual access through the shell, so I'm going to go ahead and enable it with that dropdown and apply the configuration right now. Let's go ahead and pull up our SSH client again and try this again. Looks like I have to actually close out the session and fully sign back in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign back in with my domain admin account. And looks like it got in. It's asking if I want to save my password, which I don't. But yep, I have full access to the shell. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And going back to Radius Live Logs, you see that that authentication get, did go through, so that's not an issue. Well, now we've configured the FMC GUI and shell for external authentication, but what if we want to configure external authentication for the FTD devices themselves? The configuration for that is a little bit different, so to differentiate, I'm going to go ahead and change the network device groups that the FMC and the FTD devices are in. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new device type of security management, and I'm going to go ahead and put the FMC in that and apply that policy set we previously created for that. And then I'll go ahead and leave the FTD device in firewall. I believe I actually have it configured right now, uh, defining the inside interface of the FTD device. I'm going to go ahead and change that to the, um, to the management IP address. So let's go ahead and do that right now, which is 10.1.100.11. We're going to need to create new authorization profiles for these devices. So navigate to Policy, Policy Elements, and Results. I'm going to name the new authorization profile FTD Admin. For the FTD devices specifically, we need to use radius and then service type. And for service type, for admin access, you need to use administrative, which is service type of six. So you can see here I'm choosing administrative and the service type is six, and that would give full administrative access. Next, I'm navigating to Policy and then Policy Elements. I'm going to change the existing policy from device type of firewalls to security management so we can still log into the FMC GUI just fine. But I'm going to then duplicate this. But this time, I'm going to name this FTD Management. And for the device type, it's going to be Firewalls. We're going to go ahead and save that and expand the new policy set to configure it. I'm going to go ahead and delete the demo users rule. And for domain admins, I'm just going to go ahead and swap out the, the authorization profile to FTD admins and click save. Let's swing back to our FMC and configure a new external authentication object. Since this is for ICE, we're going to go ahead and choose Authentication Method Radius, give it a name of FTD ICE Radius. The IP address, of course, will be ICE again, and the Radius Shared Secret Key will be the same one we used before. Scrolling down to radius specific parameters, we're going to go ahead and put service type equals 6 under administrator and click save. We don't need to test any additional uh, parameters. The reason being is that the test would be coming from the FMC, not from the FTD device. So there's no reason to actually test it yet. Once again, I'll enable this external authentication object, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to Devices and then Platform Settings to configure it for the FTD device. We're going to go ahead and edit the Platform Settings, and on the left-hand side, let's navigate to External Authentication. Let's go ahead and enable FTD ICE Radius under this platform setting and save it and deploy it to the FTD device. It takes about a minute for this to deploy, so I'm speeding this video along so you don't watch this deploy slowly. After the deployment is completed, there's an easy way to test this out. I'm going to go ahead and pull up SSH and SSH over to the FTD device using my AD domain admin account. Looks like I was able to log right in as the admin. Swinging back over to Radius Live Logs, I should see that there's an authentication using the FTD management policy set. 
And with that, that completes our configuration. Thank you so much for watching.